Hello everybody and welcome to your 24th C++ Made Easy HD tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be learning about dynamic memory so what is dynamic memory okay well uh, this is what sets C++ and C and stuff um, apart from other languages and this is what sets it at a lower level than say Java or C Sharp or any other language that's on a higher level what dynamic memory is it, it it allows us to uh, place things in memory like for example if we say int x or whatever the program for us uh, finds the space and tells uh, um, specifies how much space in memory we need based on the type it is right so since it's an uh, integer I think it takes up four bytes of memory and though and allocates it for us uh, and it does it before runtime but what if we actually want to um, allocate memory ourselves and we want to do that runtime uh, then we can do it with dynamic memory and that's what sets us apart so if you notice like with Java and C sharp uh, I'm not sure if they have pointers but the pointers are a big part of the language itself right but in C++ they are a huge part of the language and and they give you a lot of flexibility but it, it's a bit more complicated you you have a cost you have more flexibility but it's a bit more complicated but in, in return it's faster uh, but if we but I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna show you exactly how uh, to create this dynamic memory so there's two new keywords we're gonna be learning we're gonna be learning about the new keyword and the delete keyword now anything you allocate with new you need to deallocate with delete or you will get a memory leak so again C++ doesn't have a garbage collection like C sharp or Java so you have to uh, be aware of that now if you exit your program without deleting it um, uh, most operating systems are designed um, to get rid of that like Windows and, and all that stuff are designed for that so you don't really have to worry uh, too much but uh, you still have to know how to delete uh, allocate your memory deallocate your memory and such and big programs when you're done with using certain things in memory you should delete it if you're not using it anymore um, whereas then you're gonna get an overload. You're gonna have wait. You're not gonna have any more space to put anything, and your program will crash. Uh, so uh, you should get used to this. So, anyways, uh, this is why we need to learn pointers before. Can we do? Uh, we have a pointer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, allocate or whatever. So in this case, we're gonna say new int. Okay. So that lets us know that we ha we're creating a new. Uh, integer type and we're allocating what we want to we're allocating it at runtime and then to delete it we would delete by saying delete allocate okay so one thing about pointers that I never talked about before is dangling pointers okay now a dangling pointer is a pointer that is still pointing to a value that is null okay or like that has no value in it so when we delete it there's no value within it anymore but remember still this is still pointing to that object in memory, right? But right now there is no value in there. It is null. So what you should do whenever you delete something, you should set it to a null value by either putting null or just put zero in there. So it is now a null pointer. So if for instance you accidentally call this pointer value or something for, for whatever reason, you won't get an error. If you don't reset a value to it and you try to call it, then you'll run an error after you delete it. Okay, so uh, that's just one thing to make sure of. So uh, with now you might be saying okay why do we need to use dynamic memory when, when is this going to be useful okay well let's look at this for example okay let's say um let's see uh how many class or grades are you gonna input so let's say uh uh it's a classroom setting or whatever for a teachers course or whatever or for a student, they want to find their average or whatever, right? Uh, then we can we can get an integer variable like i, and we do uh, c and i. Now, if we wanted to, uh, if we made an array, okay? So if we made an array like uh, so, so um, we made an array called grades, right? At at the time when we create it, we have to create, um, we have to set a certain size for it, right? And that's a problem, okay? Because 
uh, one student might want to input five grades, another one might want to input 30 grades, and so on and so forth. So to compensate for that, you're going to have to do an array that's a large enough number that any uh, that any range of amount of students or whatever that um, are going to put in, the amount of grades you're going to put in, you'll be able to handle it right without, without any problems, right? Uh, but this is where dynamic memory comes in handy, right? So if we set it for 100, but the student only wants to input four grades, then we just wasted 96 elements in our array that we're not going to use. And therefore, we just took up space in memory, which we don't need. So dynamic memory helps us use space that we need. So what if I do this? That I could put grades. Uh, I could put pointer to a grades, right? And I could say grades is equals to new int, and I could put i, right? So immediately, now our array is the size of the array that we actually need it to be, right? So we don't waste any space in, in memory, and we allocate it exactly how we need to allocate it. So now you may be asking, okay, uh, okay, we allocated it, we can do stuff with it, etc., etc. But when it comes to deleting, can I just call delete grades like this? You can't do that because it isn't. We're now doing an array. So if you're if you're if you're deleting an array, then you just have to do delete, and you put the op the opening bracket and the closing square bracket, and just put in the name of the uh, the name of the variable. And once you delete it, then uh, create a null pointer, uh, a null value. So if you try to call grades again, uh, then you won't get an error. Okay. Uh, so, uh, that is, that is basically all dynamic memory is, right? So you can, um, allocate memory at runtime, right? Other stuff where they do it at compile time, this is doing it at runtime. So, let's say, uh, for example, that I put an I, I put the number 1 billion. We know that we can't have 1 billion, right? We, we can't do that. So we're going to get an error, right? So there's there's two different ways that we can uh, we can we can handle errors. We can handle them using exceptions, which we haven't learned yet, which we will learn in, in later tutorials, or we can uh, we can handle it using no throw. So if I do this, I could put no throw after new, say no throw, and then this. So what no throw means is that if it, if the value that we're inputting is not a a valid number, it makes this it makes this into a null value okay so it makes grade null so then what how can we do stuff with it so for example so we know that if there's an error that happens then it makes a null so what we could do is that we could say that if grades is equal to zero because that's null or if you could say if it's equal to null then we can put that there was an error so we could say uh, error And then uh, we could just say return so it doesn't try to run the rest of the program or something like that. Or, yeah, we just put. So, uh, let's try let's try and create an error. So, right now, we're going to put this large number. So, as you notice, we get, uh, we run into a problem because it's an invalid allocation size. But if we try to say, okay, uh, I don't know why that didn't that didn't run there. Hold on a second. Oh, I, I got that error because it was too big. Because um, the integer value can't be that big of a number. So, uh, let me try running that again. Let me do a less of a number. Uh, oh, whatever. So... Oh, send. I guess not gonna work in this situation. Let's do system pause, and you can change this to system pause as well. So if I do a large number again, it says error, and then it says that we can continue, right? So if you enter a value that is too large to be allocated, then I will uh, change this to a null value and then once, once it detects a null value it will run this uh, so that is it for this uh, tutorial I hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye